brought it up, the first part was there are building blocks, and yet the assembly of the building blocks are not controlled by genetic complexity. The assembly of the building blocks that give us our structure, our health, our behavior, is due to the interaction of the genes and the environment. The environment becomes the programmer of the genes which represent part of the, you know, part of the program. The relevant difference is conventional thought said it was self-programmed. Now all of a sudden they recognize there's not enough genes to self-program this machine, that the program is not the programming is actually in the environment and its interaction with the genes. So it's a two-way street of communication rather than a one-way street. It's not that the genes dictate to the organisms. It's that the organism and the genes have a conversation, a back and forth, a give and take. Be, to, to balance their perception of the environment. That as to adapt the, as to the you change environment. the environment of an organism, you change the genetic expression of the organism. There is a famous experiment that we've discussed on the show with other guests who brought this up. They say that there's was a scientist who decided to see how lactose-eating bacteria could adapt to a environment in which there was no lactose, in other words, no food. Yes, we talked about that uh, before. That, that's the John Cairns experiment in nature. Okay. Let's yeah, explain but... that and demonstrate then that there is an example of the environment speaking to the bacteria, hey, there's no lactose here, and the bacteria responding in just a few generations to adapt themselves to become uh, able to to eat the, yeah, oh, I got it backwards. The bacteria were lactose intolerant. Then we put them in a medium in which, mutated. yeah, then they put them, so they could not digest lactose. They, they couldn't then use put it them, as a food source, but the only food they gave them to eat was lactose. So exactly. They were in a proverbial desert there. There, there was all this lactose around, but there was not, they couldn't eat it because the, the gene was mutated. And, and here's the interesting part, because you said it took generations. It took one generation once the, the environment the organism which was under stress in the environment mm -hmm. interacted with the environment and corrected the gene mutation for the lactose in, in one cell division now that's a really clear demonstration of the environment and the organism communicating Absolutely. because you cannot that, say that. it was random mutation and the bacteria just happened to hit on mutating to become lactose eating but it you wasn't can't random. say that it wasn't random. I know, you have to that, that one out. part of the results. It's not random. Here's a beautiful story. Let me add to that, that experiment. Let me add this experiment. You take five different, uh, you take a, 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 from a, a source bacterial culture, you break it up into five samples. Okay. You put the five different samples into five environments that, the same environments, but they're, the, the communities are separated from each other. They're, not, they're in five separate little chambers, so they're, not in the same, they're in the same environment but not communicating. Got it. The environment causes them to undergo alterations to survive. Okay. Here's the beautiful part, that they all mutated the same in the individual cultures. Uh -huh. to, the, 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 the results were the same. The, the end product of the mutation ended up with the bacteria adapting exactly the same. They weren't connected to each other. So they could not pass genes to one another like the jumping gene no, theory. No, That was prohibited. Okay. No. And so what it really meant was this, that the environment controlled the evolution so that they would all evolve, come out the same, even though they weren't in communication with each other. Oh. So the bottom line says then the mutation process the, well, there were individual uh, changes in the DNA that were not exactly the same. The net result was the same, that all organisms had to make the same adaptations, change their genes to conform to survive in the environment. The point being this, if mutation was random, then, then when you put the bacteria in there, whatever happens is just a case of randomness. But when you, when you show that each colony, even though separated from each other, will mutate exactly the same way, then that, that our belief that mutation is random and, and just accident all of a sudden goes out the window and it says, my God, these organisms were adapting purposely to this environment, that there are actually genetic engineering genes which have now been recognized that allow an organism to adjust its genes to fit the environment that it's in. Now, isn't that interesting? Because then you can also say maybe they're communicating. Um, maybe they have a form of telepathy. I know Greg Braden was telling us about a recent experiment in which the DNA, they hooked it up somehow, and they were measuring 
different response from it, a little DNA in a petri dish, I guess, skin cells uh -huh. in the inner mouth of somebody. And what he was doing up to 50 miles away had an effect on how the DNA was responding. I'm not sure how they hooked everything up. I, I, that sounds you like Cleve Factor's familiar. experiments that Cleve was doing with cells that were separated from each other and responding plants. electrical activity. Yeah, in, in plants. Yeah, plants well, in, in, in human cells, too. Yeah, ah. Oh. See, so the, bo the bottom line is the belief that we just came into the environment and we are separate from the environment, uh, that's like the biblical thing, that like God put all these things in here in a separate little <laughs> from each other. Uh, it turns out to be, this is totally incorrect. All living organisms continuously adjust their genetics to their, to, to their perception of the environment. And why that's important for us in the listening audience, most importantly here is, Yes, we come with a set of genes, and in fact, we most of us, 95% or more, came with a completely healthy set that allows us to survive adequately well. And then during our lifetime, we change our genes. And we like to always blame it on, you know, like, uh, well, the toxins or something like that. But it also turns out this, that our genes will adapt our body to fit what we perceive or believe about the environment. Okay, because, boy, that has immense implications, doesn't it? It's not it, well, just what's in the environment, it's what we perceive in the environment, ah, which begins the, to explain the placebo effect, another yeah. kind of phantom effects. How you perceive what you think, your consciousness state, has as profound of effect as the physical state. Absolutely. This uh, sort of unites. The, the uniting of this new information, what it unites is this. It unites conventional allopathic medicine when it understands the new mechanisms that genes work by, not the, the uh -huh. belief that's taught right now. It will unite conventional medicine alternative or complementary medicine, and spiritual healing having all the same basic understanding that the genetic expression, the health, the behavior, the physiology of an organism, be it a, a, a snail or a human, is based on the interaction of that organism with its environment. It also means, Bruce, that here's just one more arena in which mind over matter and the role of consciousness is clearly filtering in through our understanding and rippling across the board. Absolutely. It's not just quantum physics where it happens over here in this little sector. It's our daily life that this is going on. This is, that's the beautiful part. This is, this is what's happening. We're, we're entering into the new millennium, and there's this convergence uh, of, of new awareness. And the Human Genome Project, while everyone was going, you know, all the hoopla and the parties that they actually found the code, and, and were able to do it, which was just technology. It wasn't real science. Uh, Watson and Crick's DNA uh, discovery in 1953 far surpasses anything the Human Genome Project is in regard to science. But the bottom line was this, that the scientific results, although everybody talks about the fact that we did it, the results were the joke. We expected, according to how we think conventional thought, is, how the mechanism works is that the genes control everything, and then end up finding there's not enough genes to be involved with that process, which means, ah, your fundamental thought was wrong. Well, also that we don't need to go through the decoding of the whole human genome and then go in there and tinker with it on that level. We can. Because we are altering and transforming our genes in this interactive two-way street as we speak. We're already doing that. We're doing that right now, and that all of a sudden takes back to the ancient philosophy. I mean, the, the, the history of the world that said, uh, even to the time of Christ, uh, that belief is what the whole thing is about. That's what he was. That's what his whole message totally revolved around was that your status on this planet as a human, your health, your relationships, and everything he said was a matter of belief. And that he said, "Ye of little belief, that you know you don't recognize you. You have the power to do everything I can do, transform yourself and transform life, if you recognize." the power of your belief over the expression of genes. So the spiritual wisdom traditions had it all along. One question from our chat room, a couple of questions. Let's get to the first one. So how can we positively influence our genes? It, it, the, the belief change. 
and and it's very it's very there's some new uh, power technologies for belief change that uh, everyone used to think you know like uh, if we have old beliefs that for years and years they're going to take a long time to undo this is not true that uh, beliefs can can be reprogrammed because it's a genetic program it's a machine mm -hmm. and the beliefs are programming and the beliefs can be changed instantly I recommend that people uh, tune into this website.